Hello, welcome back. I'm Andreas Chat, your tech curious web designer. I just wanted to add another quick video to this series, and this is all about how to send files like images or PDFs in a real time chat. But before we dive into the code, a quick shout out to my new supporter on Patreon. A high five to Chung Feng. Thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it. And thanks to all my supporters on Patreon, buymeacoffee.com and on YouTube. I'm immensely grateful for your support. Thank you so much. Okay, and now without further ado, let's jump right into it. So in this video, we're adding the functionality to send files in a real-time chat. I will demonstrate this quickly. So I'm adding here an image. Then I click submit file. Here it is. Now also Bobby sends a file. Great, I got it in real time. Now let's send a PDF file. This is a link to download the file. Next, let's send an animated GIF. And Bobby replies with a PNG. All right, now let's build this now. As first, let's update our model class to allow file uploads. So we go to our chat folder, here to models to py, here we have the group message class, then I'm adding the attributes blank is true and null is true to the body property, because we will be able now to send messages also without body text, just with a file. And then I'm adding the file property with a file field so we can upload all types of files. Okay, save this file. Let's do a migration now. With Python manage to py make migrations. And then Python manage to py migrate. Now let's go to the template and add the file upload field. So we go to our chat.html file in the templates folder. Here at the bottom we have our form field. We use here the HTMX attribute ws-send to send data directly through the WebSocket connection, but this only works with text. So one option we have here is to serialize our files with JavaScript to a binary data format and send it through as text. Or a simpler option is just to use another form with a standard HTMX request over HTTP and broadcast the image back to the group with the group send function. I'm going with the second option. So just underneath here, I'm adding a form for sending files. And for files it is important to set the ENC type to multi-part form data. Then we have the CSRF token, then the input field itself with the name file, and finally, the submit button. Let's add a few Tailwind CSS classes now to style it. To the parent container, I add the classes flex call and gap. Then I also style my form here. I want to position the input field and the button next to each other, so I add the flex class here. Then I add the hx post attribute which is calling this URL. We will create this URL in a second and it's sending through the group name to which group this message belongs. Okay. Then the hx target to target the messages container. And we swap it in before end. And I also add here hyperscript to reset the form just before we send off this request. Okay, then I'm styling here the input field now. I give it a transparent background and a gray text color. And finally, a few classes to the submit button. Okay, save this file. Now let's add the URL. So in our urls.py file, This is my path, okay, save this file, 
Now let's create this chat file upload function. I'm going to my views to py file. Then here at the very bottom, I define this chat file upload. Here we're receiving the chat room name as an argument. So first let's fetch the group chat object it belongs to. Okay, and now let's add the logic to save the file in the database. So first I'm checking if it's a HTMX request and it has a file attached to it. Then I'm grabbing the file. Then I'm creating here a new group message object with the create method. So the file property is the file we receive from the front end. The author is the requested user and the group is our chat group object. Okay, now this message is saved in a database. Let's broadcast it to the chat group. And the cool thing is that we can call the channel layers group send function directly here. For this I'm retrieving first the channel layer instance. Let's import this channel layer function. Then I'm creating the event. So I want the event to be handled by the message handler. So this message handler will render out the response we want to send. We have to find this handler already in the consumer.py file. I pass through the message ID and then I'm calling the group send function within the async to sync function. And as last I also add an empty return function to avoid errors in the HTMX request. Like that. Okay, let's import those two missing elements. Okay, save this file. And now let's have a look how we can display messages with files in the front end. So I'm going to the chat message.html file here. And here we're displaying the message.body. This is for messages with text content. So I'm adding here a condition now. If the message has a body, I display the body. Else, if we have a file, we display our image with message.file.url and then close the if statement. Okay, so this code will be duplicated again at the bottom here. The top code is called when the logged in user is the author, this one here when another user is the author but the logic to display the message is the same. And to follow the dry principle, so not to repeat the same code, I create an include element and add it to both locations. So I select this code, cut it from here, then I go to the partials folder, add a new file here, message underscore content.html, and paste it in here. Okay, save this file. And here I'm including now this file. And the same at the bottom. All right, let's save this file and let's do a test now. So I'm spinning up the server, pythmeasure py run server, Okay, on our website we see now a file upload button. Let's test it out. So I choose a file and submit file. And it worked, our file is here. But as we can see, it didn't scroll down properly. And this is because it takes the browser a bit of time to render the image. And the scroll function is just called a bit too early. To fix that, we can just add a bit of a delay before executing the scroll down function. 
I'm going to the scroll function in the chat.html file. Here is the function. And with a set timeout function, we can add a delay. So if no value is given, I want to have no delay. Then I add the set timeout function. And close it. And here is the time, how much I want to delay. OK, we save this file. And now I add the delay to the htmx partial. So I go to my chat underscore message underscore p dot html file. And here we call the function when the image is loaded to the website. And I add here 100, so a delay of 100 milliseconds. OK, save this file and let's check it out. I refresh the page, choose a new image, and submit file. And yes, this time it scrolled down correctly. Alright, let's test it if it works also in real time. So I'm logging in with Bobby. Bobby is online now, and he sends a file. And yes, it works in real time. Awesome. Now let's have a quick look at the admin interface. Let's go to the group messages. And as we can see here, we have none as a value for messages with files. Let's display here the file name instead. So let's go to our model class. At the moment we're displaying self.body for all the messages. Let's add a condition here now. So if we have a body, I want to display the self.body. Else if we have a file, I want to return the self.file. Okay, save this file and let's check it out. I refresh the page. OK, now we can see the whole file path here. However, I only want to see the file name itself. To get just the file name, I write here a new method. I also add the property decorator. So if the message has a file, I can return the file name with this line. So this base name function filters out the name of the file from the path. OK, and then we add else. If there is no file, return none. Let's import OS. This stands for the operating system. And then I add the file name to the string representation. Like that. OK, save this file. Refresh the interface, and as you can see, it displays only the file name now. Great. OK, next let's try to send files which are not images, like a PDF. I added here a PDF file now, then submit file. But obviously a PDF is not an image, so we got the symbol of the broken image file here. To fix this, I add another method to the model class to check if the file is an image. So I add this method at the bottom here. So in this isImage method, I'm checking if the file name ends with one of the listed format types. So we have JPEG, we have PNG, we have GIF, SVG and WebP. So if the file name ends in one of those formats, it is an image, so it returns true, otherwise it's false. Another method, and probably the better one, is to let Pillow verify if the file is an image. So Pillow is the Python imaging library, and we have it installed in this project already. OK, save this file. And now we go to our message content.html file. 
and add here another condition. So here I'm checking now if the message is an image. Then I can display the file in an image tag. Otherwise, Otherwise, I display a link here. It is linking to the file, so message.file.url. I add this download attribute, so by clicking the link, it should download the file. And we display the message.file name. Okay. And we close it with endif. And lastly, I add the paperclip symbol in front to symbolize an attachment. And this is the Unicode character for it. OK, save this file and let's check it out. So refresh the page. And now the link to the PDF document is displayed nicely. OK, let's test this now with an animated GIF. Nice. And now also a PNG file. Awesome. All right, this is all for this video. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Until then, happy coding my friends and ciao ciao for now.